Hi, you're with Chandeep at Goodly once again. And in this video, we're going to talk about the selected value function. Now, the selected value function just accepts one particular input, which is the name of a particular column. And if you have one value in that particular column, it just returns you the same value. I guess I'll be just able to explain you better when you actually see what the selected value function does. And you'll probably understand way better than this. So why don't we just take a look at the table that we have here? We have a very simple table which just has five values. One two, three, four, and five, and we will work with this table on the selected value function. So what I'm going to do is let me just quickly create a simple matrix visualization and I'll drag the values right here. Let's say I drag it in the rows and that's what I have one, two, three, four, five. All right, now let's just write the selected value function. So I'm just going to make a new measure and I'm just going to call this as a measure only, but I'm just going to inside of that write the selected value function. So I'm going to say equals to selected value. And you can see that the selected value function is asking me for a column name. Now this column name needs to be the column name of a physical table that actually exists in your data model, right? So I'm just going to specify that I just have one column, which is the table that I have created and the value column of that, right? The alternate result, we'll explore it in a while. That's also an optional input. But for now, I'm just going to close the bracket and see what happens. So uh, that's the input. I press enter and I drag it into my pivot table. And let's just see. Now you can see that against one, I get one against two, I get two, three, I get three and so on and so forth. Now what is happening? Now you can see that here, the filter context is value equals to one. So when the filter context is applied, you can see that after the filter context is applied, so value becomes equal to one. Now in this particular column, when the measure evaluation starts, it will just find, oh, there is just one value. So let me just pick it up and put it right here. Similar thing happens for two. So when you have the filter context is value equals to two, the data gets filtered and you just have one value in that particular column and the selected value function picks up the very value and gives it to you. That's what I mean to say that the selected value function will give you the same value. If at all, there is one particular value in the column that you specify it right here. Now, why don't you get anything against the total? Because against the total, the filter context is not one particular value. This is the table that you see if you have the total, which is actually no filter context. So you see the entire table. Now, because there is not one single value here, you get to see nothing, right? Now, let's just say that in the selected value function, it's saying that returns the value when there is only one value in the specified column. Okay, we have seen that, but we can also return an alternate result in case, uh, you know, it doesn't find one particular value, which is definitely in the case of the total. So what I'm going to do is maybe I'm going to write that this is the total. Let's see if it does that or not. So here at the total level, it should actually write this is the total. Actually, this should be total, right? So you can actually return some alternate value wherever you have this particular thing. Now, where are you going to use this function? At the face of it, this function looks like meaningless. You don't really find a lot of utility for that. Where are you going to use this function? So you can use this function to drive disconnected tables and then pick up a value from the slicer and then connect it to your data model. Let me just present to you a very small case study here. So what I'm going to do is real quick, I will make a table. So I'm just going to go to the new table tab and I will make a new table. And let's say in the table, I'm going to have, let's say a thousand and then I'm going to have, let's say a million. And let's just also have, let's say one lakh. One lakh is something that we use it in India, but I'm just going to anyways put that. So this is 10 raised to the power power three, which is the thousand, 10 raised to the power five, which is a lakh and 10 raised to the power six, which is nothing but a million. And maybe what I'd like to do is in my, uh, let's say calculation, I'd like to denote the calculation as show in thousands, show in lakhs or show in millions. It's a very, very common requirement. So I've made this very simple table here. Let's just call this table as a denomination table. All right. Now we have this denomination table and in the table we have just three values. We have created a very simple table. Let me just kind of zoom in. And that's the table that we have created. All right. What I'm going to do is now on this particular table, I'm going to make a slicer. So let's just say that this slicer right here and I'm just going to drag the value right here. And that's the slicer that I get. But I'd like to kind of make a kind of list and that's the slicer that I'd like to make. Now, when I select, let's say 1000 here, all the values in my model should get divided by a thousand. When I select one lakh here, all the values should get divided by a lakh. Now, actually, you know what? I have to pick up the value, whatever the user selects here. And unless I can actually pick up the value, I would not be able to divide it. Now, what do we use to actually select the value here? We're going to use the selected value function. So this, let's just take a look. 
So I'm going to come to the denomination table, maybe make a measure and call this measure as denomination. All right. And I'm going to use the function called selected value and selected value obviously has two inputs. So the first input is going to be from the denom table. Why don't you pick up the value column? And the second input is going to be one. That means if the user hasn't selected anything, I would like to see the exact units. Close the bracket, press enter, and let's just create a quick card here. And if I just quickly create a card, you can see that nothing is selected as of now. That means that in the denomination table, we have all the three values, right? The filter context isn't getting through. But if I actually select 1000, now the filter context is getting through and the value column will just have one value which is 1000 and this is just going to pick up that value and give it out to me all right now that i have made a measure which actually captures the value in the particular column what i'm going to do is i'm going to apply it on this particular table so let's just modify this table that we created earlier and let's just not have one two three four five let's just have some random numbers so i'm going to use the function called generate series and let's just say that the start value is uh, one million and the end value is let's say 1 million and 5,000. Close the bracket, press enter, and that's the table that we get. Now, this is the table that we have, and what I'm going to do is, I'm just gonna maybe convert that into a card here, and uh, delete that from here, and maybe I'll make a sum measure here. So I'm just gonna say sum of the value column, press enter, and this is, let's say, the total, total values, press enter, and I'll just drag that to my visual. Actually, this should be from the table and press enter. All right, now this is 5 billion. And maybe what I'd like to do is I'd like to, you know what, uh, divide this by my denomination. So I'm just gonna do that. And now what is going to happen is that as soon as I divide it by a thousand, it actually shows you this is 5 million thousand. If I actually divide it by a lakh, it'll show you that 50 thousand thousand. And if I actually divide it by, let's say a million, it'll actually tell you 5,014 million, right? So that's what you can do to your models and you can do these uh, simple calculations where you drive a value from an external table and put selected value on top of that, put up a slicer and and then work it out with the slicer inside your measure tables. Now, one very important thing is that, let's say for example, if there is a duplicate in the table. So what if maybe I'd like to create a duplicate of a million. So if I just copy that, paste that again, you can see that we have million two times. Now, what is gonna happen if this gets selected? Now, it will still have a unique value. That means that all, although you can see that there are two values here, but if you actually pick up a million in your slicer, what gets happened is that the million gets selected. It has two values but there is only one unique value, right? That's the case when it decides that, okay, I will still go pick up the million that is here because these both are the same and I just have to pick up the unique value. So it doesn't really matter. Although if you actually pick up two values, now you can see that there are two different values. And in that case, this is gonna give you the alternate result because in the value column, there are actually three values of them, two are different. So it actually gives you the different result. All right, I hope I made sense and I explained you the selected value function. If you have any questions around this, please feel free to put them down in the comments below. I'll be more than happy to help. Thanks so much for watching this and you take care. Bye-bye.